Like many of you now watching this video, I too saw Is This the Death of VFX by Corridor Crew and thought, how have they done that? I want to do that. And after a painstaking month of trying to learn about Python, Linux and artificial intelligence, I've figured out that you don't really need anything other than a Windows PC. In some instances, you don't even need a good graphics card either. So I'm going to share my findings so you can learn the workflow and put you and your friends in your own AI generated images. Not even a month ago, the open source AI art generation landscape was pretty frustrating to navigate. The space was full of coding experts who'd communicate on a level that would resonate with other coders, but not so much creatives. At least not ones with my minimal brain capacity. Eventually, some very intelligent community members came together to build a browser-based interface and a multitude of online notebooks that allow you to initialize the code without really having to understand what it all means. So. If you're someone like me, all about the creative and not so much the coding, you can basically achieve what Corridor Crew did in their video, and it'll probably only take you a couple of hours from start to finish. The first thing you've got to do is gather 20 images in a 1x1 one one format, which is a square. I've done a couple of experiments in my other videos on the topic, but what I've settled on is this. 12 close-up images of your face, some straight on, a couple either side, then looking up and some looking down. Eight mid shots which are framed from your chest to the top of your head, again straight on and then a couple either side from a 45 degree angle. Get a good range of emotions, the quality of the images are really important, they need to be in focus. I'd avoid zooming into photos in the edit, you want your framing to be perfect when you're taking the pictures, otherwise when you scale these images down to 512 by 512 pixels, which is necessary for the eyes to be able to train on them, it's not going to be as sharp and therefore won't work as well. You want good lighting so you get accurate skin tones, white balancing is important here. Keep razor sharp focus so the subject isn't soft compared to the background. Another incredibly important thing is getting a variety of backgrounds as well. I went for two different locations in my own home and was fine. My friend Johnny used one plain wall in his house and the AI training actually struggled. Additionally, you should change your clothing as well, get a variety of different colours and styles, or again, your training data won't be as good. Pictures from your smartphone should be sufficient as long as you've framed it for one by one. Now you can crop your photos in two ways, first using Photoshop to scale them down to 512 by 512 pixels, keep the resolution at 300 if it isn't already, then in preferences pick by cubic sharpener best for reduction, then simply drag your images in, then go to layer, export as, make sure they're all PNGs. The alternative way is taking them into a browser based software to get a similar result. I've left the link in the description below. When using this one in particular, it isn't clear what the resizing and compression method is for me, so I'm assuming it's less effective than Photoshop, but probably not enough to be an issue with the training though. Then comes the naming conventions for these images. I've been told that using vowels in your name is bad, couldn't tell you why, if there's any truth to it, but I've just got into the habit of avoiding them completely just in case. I've named my pictures JMS, DRM, BTH for James Dream Booth. In the Windows Explorer, you can actually select all of your images at once and then hit this button, rename one file, and it does it for all of them, which is super handy for this as well. And that's it for the initial setup of the workflow. Now you've got a couple of options for the training method. If you haven't got a GPU with over 12 gigabytes of VRAM, you'll need to use one of the Google Colab docs to train your images. These are constantly being updated and can go out of date fairly quickly, but the best one I'm aware of at the moment is the Fast Dream Booth Colab by The Last Ben. I've already done a tutorial for this, but for the sake of keeping this guide accessible for everyone, I'm essentially going to repeat it here for anyone new to this channel. So if you've already seen part 3 of Create Art from your own face, I'd say move to the next chapter, otherwise keep watching. I'm going to put all of the relevant links below as well for you to follow along with. First, open the Google Colab doc. Google will kick you out of this if you're inactive on the page, so make sure to click on the drop down tabs or scroll around in the browser every minute or so in order to avoid dropping out. If you do lose your GPU at any point, you're going to have to start over and to do that go to runtime disconnect and delete runtime and then refresh the page to start the google collab click on the first play button you'll get a warning that says you're loading something from github and that's fine so click run anyway then connect to google drive account just make sure you've got at least 10 gigabytes of storage free in here otherwise you'll run into issues later after that 
Click the next play button on setting up environment. If you click the drop down, you'll eventually see a green tick on dependencies and exformers. Next, you'll need to make a Hugging Face account. Once you've made the account, they'll send you an email that you need to click on to verify your account. After that, you're going to click on the Hugging Face link below again, which will take you to the license. Read it, click the checkbox and agree to their terms. Then go to settings, access tokens, make a token, name it anything you want, it's not important. Change it from read to write and then copy it using the button to the right of it. Paste it back into your collab doc where it says hugging face token, hit the play button, wait for the green tick and then move on to the next section. And then give your session a name, hit the play button and wait for the tick. Press the button next to instance images and it'll create a new button called choose files. Press that and then select all the images you're going to use for the training. If you've used 20 images like me, you'll want to set the training steps to 2000 in the next section. If you want to play it safe though, you can set it to 3000, but tick save checkpoint every 1000. This way, if your 3000 images are overtrained, you can go back to the 2000 file and just use that instead. Then let it train. 2000 steps should take around half an hour. Once that's finished, click the play button on test the trained model. Give it a couple of minutes and our URL will appear at the bottom. Click on this and then the big blue click to continue button and you'll have automatic running in your browser. You'll see your train checkpoint in the top left, which means it's loaded in properly. And now it's time to type in some prompts Get images. I'd suggest you use a website like Lexica or OpenArt.ai if you haven't really prompted before. I've got a couple of tips in my Lazy Tutorials playlist that can help, but if you want results fast, just copy and paste some prompts from Lexica. Don't worry about getting your face into these images right away. With these, you're just looking to get a solid base image. We're going to replace the face later. Once you've got an image you like, you're going to take that into the image to image tab where you'll throw it into in painting, mask over the head of the character you've just generated, paste the prompt you use to create the image into the prompt window at the top, but then add your identifier, which just so happens to be whatever you called your images before you sent them into training. So mine is JMS DRM. BTH. Up your sampling steps to 40, take the denoising strength down to 0.5 and then up the batch size to 8. Now keep generating images until you get one that you like. You might have to roll the dice a couple of times, sometimes tweaking the value of the denoising strength can help as well. You can even upscale your images as well in the extras tab, so they're even higher resolution when you're done. And that's method one for those of you with limited local VRAM. The second workflow in my opinion is a lot better, but requires a decent graphics card to use. You'll need to install the automatic web UI version of Stable Diffusion. I've done this tutorial before, but again for the sake of making a cohesive guide, I'll do a quick run through of how you set that up as well. There are some relevant points that'll affect being able to use Dream Booth training locally, so I wouldn't skip this bit. First, download Python, then install it, tick all the boxes on the custom install path, then download Git, install it, tick all the boxes until this screen, change this to notepad and then leave everything else as it is as you complete the install. Create a new stable diffusion folder on one of your drives, avoid putting it on your desktop. It's also important that there are no spaces in any of the names in your file path. So if you need spaces, use dashes or underscores. Otherwise, this other method of training won't work. From your new folder, open a command terminal by typing cmd into your browser window. Then paste git clone and then the automatic repository address. Hit enter and let it install. Make a Hugging Face account, agree to their terms, download the .ckpt file, put it in your models folder, open the web user.batch file and wait for that install to finish. After that, close down your command terminal, download gfpgan, put it in your gfpgan folder, click on the web UI user.batch file again, wait for it to do its thing and then copy and paste this URL in into your browser to open Stable Diffusion. Once you're in here, head over to the Extensions tab, then Available, Load From, you'll see all of these extensions pop up. The forum is a very cool one for animation, it's how I made this music video, but for the time being, you want to install Dream Booth. When I did this, it was a little bit buggy, but after restarting my browser and command terminal a couple of times, I eventually got the Dream Booth tab at the top. If your automatic web UI isn't opening after you've installed Dream Booth, it could be a couple of things. In your stable diffusion folder, you might need to open your command terminal and type git pull to make sure you're using the most recent version of automatic. If that fails, you might have the wrong version of PyTorch installed. If you go to the website, scroll down until you see stable, window, pip, python, cuda 11.6 and then copy and paste this into the command terminal. There's also a chance that your file path has names with spaces in them. Remember, you need to have dashes or underscores for spaces instead. 
Reopen the webui user.batch file and be patient and see if it loads. If you're still having problems, you can always go to the GitHub to troubleshoot on the link below. Once you're in here, use the same name as your training pictures, then change your source checkpoint to the 1.5 CKPT model that you just got from Hugging Face earlier, and then set the scheduler to DDIM. Then click Create. Now, before we proceed, you'll also need Joe Penner's regularization images. I've left the link below where you'll want to download the images from his GitHub repository. So click on the green code button, copy the link, create a new folder called regularization underscore images, type CMD into your browser to open the command prompt window, and then type git clone and paste the repository address in. You'll need these images when it comes to your training later. But for now, let's get back to the training model, which requires you to select your newly created model at the top of the page. Then in the image prompts, put a photo of your file name followed by the word person. You can also use man or woman if you wanted, but I've found that person works the best. In the class prompt, put photo of a person, man or woman, then grab the file path for your images and paste it in the dataset directory. Underneath that is your classification dataset directory. This is where you'll put the link to Joe Penner's images that you got previously. Again, you've got three options within here, one for person, one for woman, one for man. Change your classification images to 1,500 and then the training steps to 1,200. Don't change these two settings underneath. And when you get to the learning rate, it should be 0 0.000001. That's zero. 0.5 zeros and then a one. The save checkpoints are buggy at the moment, so set those to something higher than your training steps amount. And then in the advanced settings, click 8 bit Adam. It's going to lower the amount of VRAM needed and then change the mix precision to FP16. Scroll back to the top and hit train. On my 3090, this took about seven minutes. Once it's done, you'll have a new .ckTP file in your models folder. And you can use that in combination with your identifier and class word to generate images. You should get pretty nice results from this as is, but you can also swap to your 1.5 CKTP file to generate full body images and then swap back to your train data.ckpt to edit faces in the image to image impact painting tab in a very similar way to the Google Colab method I showed you earlier, but this time you'll be using your identifier and the class name in the prompt at the top. So in my case, JMS DRM BTH person. And now you'll be able to generate faces onto these characters just like Corridor Crew did. What a crazy month that was. Lots of headaches for me trying to figure this stuff out. Hopefully this guide has saved you some of that. I can see loads of applications for this technology. I've actually got a card game I made over a year ago. I never finished because the art was taking too long. I'm really tempted to use AI to finally push it over the line. And I might even dig a bit deeper into that in some of the content I'm making as well. So you'll have to let me know in the comments if it's something you'd like to see. Other than that, thanks for watching.